morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just want to say that uh, I've, I've enjoyed getting a word from the Lord and being able to share with you uh, for these last two and a half months. And we're going to have another video tomorrow. And then starting next week, we're just going to be doing this one, one day a week. And it probably will be at the beginning of the week, so you can expect Monday. But uh, we're not going to be doing these every day. Uh, since we're going to open the doors Sunday morning and uh, inviting people to come and worship uh, here in this place and uh, come to Sunday school, uh, we're going to we're going to limit the number of videos to one a week and the emails. Uh, we'll send those as we need to, at least communicating once a week, because we still need to uh, stay connected and uh, share information. Because as we reopen and transition, uh, there are bits of information we want to be sure that we're all on the same page about. So bear that in mind. But uh, again, let me just emphasize, we are opening the door Sunday, uh, this May 31st. And we're going to worship at 8.30. Uh, we're aiming at 45 minutes. And then Sunday school at 9.30. We're aiming at 45 minutes, and then our second worship will be at 10.30, and again, aiming at 45 minutes. And just so you know, I will not be in the uh, second service at 10.30. I'm going to be in Buckner, Missouri, because my granddaughter is being baptized, and my newest granddaughter is going to be dedicated. And so I'm going to be at First Baptist Church of Buckner, and... and uh, worship with them in their 11 o'clock service and celebrate with my two granddaughters. And that's exciting. We've been looking forward to that, and uh, just so you know. Um, had a great, great time again with the hamburger feed. And as I shared with you yesterday morning, uh, we raised $6,300 plus. And I've, I've been told in the office that it may be getting closer to 7000 uh, I think there was a couple other checks that came in yesterday, and so we're up to 6700 And so if anybody has a heart to give to that, we'll just go ahead and give. We, we gave all the hamburgers away, so we don't have any of those left. But uh, you go ahead and, and bring some offering in, and we'll pay that youth building loan down. Uh, let me look at uh, First Kings for just a bit. Uh, this is another story from the Old Testament, and yesterday we looked at a story about Elisha. Today we're looking at the life of Elijah, Elijah, and uh, he was the predecessor prophet that then gave the mantle over to Elisha. And there's a number of scripture I'm going to read, but then I'll just make a couple of comments about it. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the Lord, word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two says of seed. And he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood, and said, Fill four water pots with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Then he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar and he also filled the trench with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, in Israel. Let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all the things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me that this people may know that you are the Lord God, that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. 
Elijah said to them, seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them all, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and executed them there. Then Elijah said to Ahab, get up, eat, and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. As I looked at this passage of scripture and all the details, if I read the whole story, it would, it would talk about Elijah setting up the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 other false prophets and, and all 850 prophets were uh, called on to set up their own sacrifice and to call on Baal to see if uh, Baal was going to come down and show himself in power and send fire from heaven. And uh, they did all of that and they did it all day long. And In fact, at noon, Elijah got up and kind of taunted them just a little bit and said, what's the matter? Is your God's asleep? Uh, are they not alive? Are they not active? And, and, uh, and the bottom line was nothing happened. And then where we picked up was when Elijah uh, rebuilt the altar of God and put the sacrifice on. And then as he called on the name of the Lord, the fire fell, fell and, and uh, consumed the sacrifice, the, the altar, the wood, and, and all the water that had been poured out. And, uh, and so that, that's the story that we've usually focused on. But as I looked at the broader context and went back into chapter 17 and again the first verse of chapter 18, uh, this had to do with and evolved out of what I'm going to call a pandemic. They were going through a famine. And if you look at 18, uh, chapter 18, verse 1, uh, they were in their third year of that famine. And uh, it had rain, and so the people were desperate. And they were calling on all kinds of gods and all kinds of voices to help them make it through this pandemic of famine. That's, that's, that, that's the larger context for this whole ordeal between Elijah and the prophets of Baal and the false prophets. And I just want to caution you with the word that as we come through this uh, COVID crisis thing, that we continue to keep our attention focused on the living God. Because he is the one that will deliver us. And he is the one that will guide us in the way. And I want to encourage you not to be fearful. Uh, we've done everything. Uh, and I say everything. I'm, I'm sure there are some other things that we could do. But we've done many things to be in compliance. Uh, with our government and with our local authorities. And even given our guidelines uh, for how we're going to reopen this coming Sunday. But when we come together, Jesus said, when two or more are gathered together in my name, I am there. When we come together, I want to encourage you, don't come in fear. Don't come in doubt. But come with a celebrative heart. Come to worship. And we need to do the social distancing thing. And, and we need to be, not do the handshakes. And we need not to hug for a while. I mean, just to get through this thing and, and, uh, and, and because some people are not comfortable with that and that, that's okay. But don't come with doubts and fear. Come knowing that the living almighty God yeah. who is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow just like he did with Elijah, is it going to show up with power? Amen. Now, if we as the people of God can come with that kind of expectation, we're going to continue to see how God marvelously leads us through and works through this COVID crisis. And there's, there's lots of voices don't listen to them. 
They're like the 850 false prophets, the 450 Baal and the 400 false. They're like those false prophets. Don't listen to those voices. You listen to the living God. And he has called us to come together this Sunday morning. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your love. And thank you for your presence. And thank you that you have continued to keep the body of Christ connected for these two and a half months that we've not been able to meet. And God, we pray that this Sunday morning as we get to come together in this place, that no longer will we come together because this building is something special, but what we do here together in worshiping you, the living God, is special. And I pray that we'll come with united hearts, not hearts that are fearful, but united hearts gathered together solely for the purpose of worshiping you and seeing your mighty power work in our midst as we worship and proclaim your word in our services and in our Sunday school. Lord, we pray this in your precious and your holy name. Amen.